Thank you, Lulu. Thank you, Jeff. And this is the Government Center where representatives are responding to questions from Kenyans. And the beauty about it is the growth of the democracy in having all the sides contribute to this. And earlier on, um, Piers Hinga, you had a thought about it, and uh, you were nodding your head, certainly not in agreement as to what the experts have said, and also one of the views from the, our town hall session. What are your thoughts? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, f first of all, I want to ask uh, our experts, uh, the economists, Kwame specifically. Mm. You know, sometimes they almost try and paint government as though we are clueless and we are just lazy and we just wake up and we just do things without thinking. And I think that isn't wrong. I have here and have published it. It's, it's actually a public document. We have gone and done studies in countries that have solved the housing problem, in countries that also made mistakes. I have here 10 countries. Out of the 10, only three didn't have the mandatory contribution. You have got Singapore, which some Gituku almost belittled that we are, we, are, we are looking at, we are not comparing apples to apples. He just compared. 17% employer, 20% employee. Out of that combined 37, 23 goes to housing. You have got a country like even Cameroon, 1.5%. You have Nigeria, 2.5%. You have got Mexico, it's at 8%. You have got Brazil, which is at 8%. I wish you can also compare maybe the population of Brazil and Kenya. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because there is no country in the world today that is progressive, that is not having this conversation about addressing the matters of housing, even the US. Even when you hear about those companies, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they have almost a guarantee of about a trillion shillings from the US government to deal with the issues of housing. So this is not an abstract conversation. That's number one. Number two, it is important to understand the economics of housing. Because again, I think we lose um, the, the conversation because whenever you have an economic crisis and everybody's saying, create jobs, how do you create jobs? You must have a deliberate plan to create jobs. And this deliberate plan, ours, is it's called extended public works, whereby you take the house and you disaggregate it into components. We have got 69 items that are ring fence that would be produced locally because they are produced here. But what we keep on missing, and this is what I, I find the disconnect with our experts, is they misunderstand the whole uh, uh, concept of large economies of scale. Okay. So yes, if you're building one, 500 houses here, 200, you will never get the large economies of scale. Manufacturing is going to be the biggest beneficiary of this program okay. because every component okay. in the house is a, is 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 is, is uh, like a manufacturing opportunity. Okay. So yes, you don't yes, manufacture. You, you will proceed to the manufacturing part. Um, I understand that uh, the. Uh, CEO of the Institute of Economic Affairs, Kwame um, Weno, has a question for you. And this is uh, his direct question to you as uh, to what he said, your response, and what he perhaps may have about your submissions here. Yes, Kwame. All right. CS uh, Hingad, uh, I don't think people in government are clueless. I actually think sometimes you guys are too clever. Um, that's the problem. But let me tell you, you mentioned a number of countries. Uh, so you left out Venezuela, which also started. Singapore comparing to Kenya is a city state. I mean, 600, it's, it's just slightly uh, smaller than Nairobi. I mean, slightly larger than Nairobi. So obviously, we are not comparing like for like. The income levels when the housing fund started in, in, in Singapore was three times what it is in Kenya today. So maybe we need that as correction. But let me tell you, you mentioned a number of countries, including Brazil. Have you heard of something called favelas? Yes. It's still in Brazil as well. So how come they haven't solved the housing problem? All I'd like us to be honest about is, when you have the income per capita per person in Kenya at $2,000 at $400, the kind of houses, the, the problem you're trying to solve is not a housing problem. It is an income problem to begin with. Secondly, I think that I, I never call myself an expert in anything, but the economics of housing I understand well. In fact, even in 2017, I started to follow this issue. So maybe we should respect one another's knowledge around that area. Um, I'm just saying this. We have the National Housing uh, Corporation, which still exists and their laws. It's been there. Housing reform should start by asking ourselves, if the National Housing Corporation exists and it hasn't solved this problem, remember it, there's even a government program that was started for, for, for workers, uh, for government workers, which government fi finally adopted. And then I come to the model of funding that you have proposed, asking people like me and everybody else to, to put in that money. 
When seven years pass, you will be unable to pay out 700 billion shillings. So basically, the housing need, we don't debate. Your financing model, as you've explained it, and then the sneaky way in which you're bringing in rules before the laws and everything else through this funding bill, suggests to us that we are actually trying to shoot fast, and then you'll decide thereafter whether we've reached the target. So that's what worries me. I respect the, the professionalism within government, but I have to tell you that the economics about this and the funding model, you've got them wrong. Singer, please, go ahead. Yeah, uh, first of all, let me also uh, disabuse a, a, a point that he made earlier on. Uh, because we have had two rounds of bidding where we have published various parcels of land. The first round, we had 59 parcels of land, and it was largely around Nairobi and those other areas. I had 102 bids. Then we published parcels of land in other parts of the country. 50 parcels of land in the areas of Bungoma, Nyamira, the Western Block side, and some in, the, in, in Central Kenya. We only had two bidders, okay? So the notion that you can just invite, tell the investors, you come and build. And he says something which is correct about National Housing Corporation. It is true that since the 1960s, we, National Housing Corporation did very well. Why did it do well? Because National Housing Corporation was funded by government until the late 80s when we had the structural adjustment and IMF and the World Bank told us exit from these areas. Since then, National Housing Corporation has not received a cent from national government. Even if you look at this budget, there is not a single cent that is going to National Housing Corporation. What does that mean? We outsource the entire housing agenda to the private sector. And what they did, and there's nothing wrong with the private sector because the private sector is after a profit. And what they've done is that they have focused on the 3% and they left out the other 97%. So it is a high time somebody has to fight for Pastor Baraza and the likes of the people in, in uh, other places because they too have a right. And by the way, Egypt in 2014 made it a birthright to own a home. Asante. So since then, they have built 800,000 homes. So, uh, Asante, Asante, 